Hi, this is Chris Bullock at The Wandering Bull. Today we're going to talk about zigzag stitch, um, and we're going to show you how to start, how to add a quill, and how to end. Here's an example. Um, this is the zigzag stitch, this body of work right here, and this band right here. And you can see in the middle that has um, what we refer to as a sawtooth um, technique, and I'll show you that as well. So the focus of this, this video today is to show you the nuts and bolts, how to start, how to add a quill, and how to end. Um, we're not gonna do a great big project, we're just gonna work on that little, those, those techniques right there, and that seems to be where um, it's the hardest part to do. Um, and no sense in watching me quill for five hours, we're just gonna work on those, those three little things. So, to get started, I'm gonna um, draw a line and we're gonna work from the, the two lines. So, working with um, brain tanned deer skin. Um, this is smoked, it's not dyed with the walnut. This is walnut dyed brain tan, see how nice and dark it is. So to start, I'm gonna use a 10-0 beading needle and um, a polyester knot and cotton blend thread. You could use um, the Nymo thread. Almost any thread's gonna work for you. And I'm gonna use it a single ply. And you don't need anything longer than this, I'm 15, 20 inches. Gonna wax this guy up. It takes so long to complete this. You don't need a big long piece of thread. It's just gonna get in your way. We're gonna tie a knot at the end. We beeswax the thread to keep it from tangling. It um, keeps it from knotting up and uh, just that that's creates um, it's difficult to work with. So the wax makes it slide through the leather nice and it doesn't get tangled. So I'm gonna snip that knot off right close. And my other thread, I'm gonna shorten that guy up a little bit. That's plenty of thread. That's gonna last a long time. That'll last two hours of doing quill work. I wax that up, tie a knot on the end. Um, I've been pre-soaking the quills. You want the quills to soak for an hour, two hours before you um, use them. Softens them up. We're gonna flatten them for this technique. So my knot, I'm gonna snip that tail off. I have the pencil lines on my work. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna basically my needle will be on the outside of each line as I move from my left to my right. So that's gonna be my first stitch. It's a two needle technique. So my thread is beyond that line. Get my other thread going. So by putting both knots on the inside, I'm gonna quill over the knots and you won't see them. I've soaked these quills for a couple of hours. I want them nice and soft. Um, I have white, red, and black in here. So on the quill, this end here sticks into the animal and this end here sticks into your finger. So the black end has little bobs on it that you visually can't see, but once it sticks in your finger, it, it's a good tug to pull it back out. So I refer to that end as the business end. So you gotta be careful of that end. And what we're gonna do is snip it right off. I'm gonna poke it right into the um, paper towel. Snip it off. And 
this end is already snipped. We'll clean that up a little bit. So to flatten it, I'm gonna hold it in place. My Dare Antler quill flattener. It's had uh, flattened many quills. So I'm gonna hold the end that sticks in the animal and push it towards the point, the black end. What I'm gonna do is, is make a loop first. So this is what we refer to as the back stitch. So my needle pops up. I want my thread, I want my needle on the outside of my work, whether I'm on the left or the right. Pull this guy tight. So see the little loop? I'm gonna stick the end in the loop, pull it tight. That's how you're gonna start. I'm gonna fold this guy over to the left side. That's why you don't want a whole lot of thread because it gets in your way. So same thing, another back stitch. So I'm gonna come down about an eighth of an inch, slide my needle up about a sixteenth, fold this quill over. So what I want my needle to be on my left on the outside of my work. I'm gonna fold that quill over, pull that thread tight. That's step number two. Now I'm gonna fold it back, which will create that zigzag. Take my needle. Now I'm gonna stay on the outside of that pencil pencil line right next to it. So I put my needle in, so I go, moved downward about an eighth of an inch, and then I'm, my needle's gonna slide forward about a sixteenth. And pull that tight. Fold it again. So nice, nice short threads. And if you use a monster long quill, which everybody wants to do, it dries out faster than you'd be able to use it. So I'm gonna fold that quill over. Pull that thread tight and repeat. So if I keep the left hand needle on my left side, poke it in the leather, and the right on my right side, once I get moving, that rhythm will, will happen naturally and go quickly. So my needle in place, I want my thread to be on the inside of that needle and over my quill. And pull that tight. You can see how that's coming in. Stay on the outside of your pencil line. Go a quarter inch down, eighth inch down. All right, so. Now I need to add a quill. So what I'm gonna do is, I have enough right here over, I'll call it overhang right now. So I'm gonna do my back stitch. So I go in, just catch a little piece of leather. With the brain tan deer skin, you don't need to go all the way through. I don't need to pull it out the back and then push it back. I can just grab a little pinch of that leather. So I'm gonna do my, my normal back stitch technique. I'm gonna go inside of the needle with the thread and pull that tight that's pretty close so what I'm gonna do fold that guy there so now now it's time to add a quill so I've used up one whole quill and I um, cut the tip and flatten them as I use them I don't I don't do that in advance So the pot that sticks in the animal, I'm gonna apply that underneath my back stitch. So I have that stitch in place. I'm gonna lift the quill up a little bit, slide my new quill underneath it, hold it in place, 
pull that thread tight. Just hold it so everything folds over nice. I'm happy with that transaction. So now with my left needle, I'm gonna stay on the outside of that pencil line, go backwards, go around and over the quill. So you cannot even see that quill. So I'm gonna continue as I was before. Stay on the outside of my pencil line. I like to keep the needle in place. Take my thread, go underneath the needle and over that quill. That way my needle is on the outside of my work. So I go under my needle, over my quill, then I, then I pull that thread out. And if you stick the needle back in, it's easy to keep track of it. Doesn't get tangled up with the other one. I believe I have enough to do my next stitch and add that new quill over that black one over that black tip and we won't see it. So I got that in place, pull it tight, select that next quill. So to show you again, so I have done the back stitch on this quill that's pointing out on my right. I'm going to lift it up a little bit. Now I'm going to slide the new quill underneath it. Pull it tight. And that this the second quill that I'm working with right now, it's already starting to dry up and get a little difficult to bend. I'm gonna bend that over. I'm gonna pull it tight. So this is the hard part. It's, it's theoretically, it's basic. Just take that back stitch, you come back a quarter to an eighth of an inch, slide that needle forward an eighth of an inch, Go around the quill, around the needle, over the quill. And we want to keep that little guy underneath so he's not visible. Fold it over. And stay outside the pencil mark. And I believe my, that space that I'm dealing with is it's about three sixteenths of an inch wide. Pull it tight. You want to select your quills, kind of sort them out. You want to maintain the same thickness of a quill. Um, you don't want a skinny one and a fat one, a skinny one and a fat one, because then your work kind of shows that bunching up. But the length of the quill really doesn't matter. Obviously, the longer the better, providing it doesn't dry out during your work. Um, but to sort them through, basically the diameter is important. Okay, so. I'm happy with that. Now let's, I'm gonna add, let's go with the DACA quill.
So I'm going to add a new color quill. So it's the same thing. I've already made the back stitch on this side. I'm going to lift it up a little bit, slide my new quill underneath it, pull that tight, fold the two together. Stay on the outside of that pencil line. Go underneath the needle and over the quill. I'm happy with that. I'm going to pull it a little tighter. So let's, I'll back up a little bit. See how that quill is sticking out to the right? So my lines are not going to be nice and straight. I'm going to keep this tight, but I'm going to pull the quill. I'm going to pull the quill so that line maintains a straight line. And pull this side a little tight. Fold it over. So we showed you how to add a quill. Here's a different variation. Here's color. You can see what we've done. I'm going to do... So let's... Let's work on this sawtooth technique. And basically that's going to require two quills going the same direction, one on top of the other. And once you fold over, you'll, you'll see how that sawtooth is, is um, created. So let's... Lift that guy up, sneak, sneak my new one in, pull it tight, fold that over. I'm going to do one, one stitch on this side. So the quill is coming out on my left hand side. I'm going to grab a white quill. I'm going to lift this guy up a little bit. Slide my new, the white quill underneath that one. So basically, here I have two quills in place. I have the black quill on top and the white quill underneath it. So I'm gonna fold it to my right and watch what happens. Now I have the white on top. I do my back stitch as normal. So I go back, come up, take my thread, go underneath the needle on top of the two quills. I'm going to lose some thread here and line that white one on top, pull it tight, fold it backwards. I'm going to pull this white quill a little tighter, there we go. Now my thread is, if you can see, my thread is in the wrong location. My loop is to the left and my needle is inside my work. I want my needle on the outside of my work. 
The needle placement is super important to, to create this. So here's where I made the mistake earlier. I left my needle inside my work and I want my thread underneath it and then over the quills. Because what that does is allow my thread now to come down. And if I did it the other way, my thread would be hooked in there and would not want to um, come down nicely. And look at that. I will get three saw tooths out of that and I'll end right before that black on that white one. I'm gonna do the stitch again. Take my thread underneath the needle, over the quills. Pull it tight. Do my stitch. Underneath the needle, over the top. And I'm gonna catch just that black quill. So you can see this is the white quill, it's just a little bit showing right there. Now I'm gonna take my new quill I need to add to continue that white sawtooth pattern. I'm gonna lift that guy up a little bit. Not too much. Slide them underneath, hold them in place. That little black quill wants to be in the wrong place. So let's see if we can get him back underneath. Get this white quill on top of him. So with the awl, I'm basically gonna force this guy towards myself. Start again. Lift it up, sneak the new quill underneath. So I wanna make this little tip here come down. There you go. So he does not come up to the surface of the quill work. He's basically hidden underneath and we'll just quill right over it. I'm gonna hold it there for a second. Um, if you give the quills a little bit of time, and I call it resting, um, they, they harden up and will tend to stay in place easier. So if it's still wet and soft and supple, your hands are wet, the quill is wet, everything's gonna to wanna to slide. So by giving it that one second to rest, or half a minute, not a second, I 
Happy with that. Pull that guy tight. So I have the white quill. I'm gonna lift that up a little bit. Get a little space underneath that stitch. Slide my new quill underneath it. Pull it tight. Pull it over. That white quill is starting to dry up on me. As you can see, I have a whole lot of ends all sticking out right where my work is. Still a little challenging. So once again, thread underneath the needle, over the quills. there. I'm going to do one more, tack this white one down one more time, and then I'm going to lose the white and just go back to the blue or the black. needle underneath over the both of them pull that tight and now we're gonna lose the white quill we'll just bend them right down pull that tight that way pull it tight this direction so we're gonna basically stop creating that um, sawtooth with the white and we're just going to fold the black over that white. And one more stitch on that. Um, get the black over again and see now we have lost that sawtooth with by dropping the white you've got the idea of the sawtooth technique with the two quills um, difficult you got a bunch of quills going your fingers are wet the quills are wet um, we've lost the white quill so we're going to lose that sawtooth technique i'm going to fold this black over i'm going to snip this white quill out of our way i'm going to finish up with this sawtooth technique we're going to lose the white quill it's underneath i'm going to continue with the black and then i'll show you how to end that black so i've got i'm on my right i'm going to fold it over one more time the ending technique is basically we're going to wrap do the back stitch. Instead of going over the quill, we're going to wrap our thread around the quill and pull it, and it will create uh, a tucking um, on that quill, and it will slide underneath. I'm going to do one more stitch, and then we'll go. Then I'll show you that back stitch with the um, the ending section on that quill. How to end that quill. So to end the quill, I'm going to. Do the back stitches normal, the same distance that we've been doing all along. My thread's gonna go underneath the needle, but instead of over the quill, I'm gonna wrap it around the quill. Quill's gonna tuck underneath. Quill flattener, we can flatten that work out. So now this quill is coming underneath the previous wrap. So I'm going to take the thread on my left side, I'm going to go under my work, pop out in the middle of that row. Grab this quill, I'm gonna snip it short.
and I'm gonna pull it back underneath. Pulled it back underneath, pull that guy tight on that side. I can snip off that little bit that's showing. So basically pulled that quill back underneath. So to end this, I'm gonna basically put my needles through to the back side, tie a knot. Have this one other thread. Same thing, I'm gonna go all the way through my fabric to the back, tie my knot. So, simple zigzag technique. We showed you how to add a quill, how to do the sawtooth, and how to end it. Um, thanks for watching other videos. Check out wanderingbull.com.